Welcome back to another Torch video. I've got the Phoenix E16 in. Had a few requests on this in the past. So what I did was I asked Phoenix UK, my Phoenix, to send a sample in and they did. So I thought I'd make a quick video on it and share some of my thoughts on this light. I put some of the run times and power output on screen, just be a bit easier to see. They do have an output chart which shows the drop off. Do remember with the non-rechargeable batteries you will get a lower output, you won't get the full output on this. Showing you some of the items included in the package, you also get an O-ring, a spare O-ring for the light, and there's another ring included which you could use to attach it to a keychain or something else. The wrist strap is a bit smaller than the other Phoenix ones, which is okay, it's perfectly fine. All the details are on screen for you. In terms of the size, this is one of the smallest that I've used in the 16340. Um, quite a nice little design. They've got this sort of bronze or copper effect on the stainless steel with the bezel and the switch or the side switch. Also got that double clip which um, doesn't protrude and it doesn't contact the head which is nice particularly when you're unscrewing it. A couple of quick close-up shots. An interesting knurling pattern on this. It's a bit different. It provides a decent amount of grip. It's sort of like an uneven dot in the lines that they've put on the, uh, the light itself just to give it a slightly different look. The optical lens on this is one of their compact ones and we've got the XPL High which is more of a throwy LED really but it'd be interesting to see how it performs on this particular light. Threads on this are square cut and it also as I mentioned earlier it doesn't hit the clip when you're unscrewing it that's a nice touch to see. Now this came with a primary cell or non-rechargeable like I said earlier um, do look into the rechargeable ones you don't get as higher output with this but they do last longer inside there's the spring and there's a magnet beneath that i think for the bundles they do this with or without a battery but you can also get a micro usb rechargeable one so that might be an option if you don't have a charger i'm going to use a so shine for the testing on this one for me longer term it just makes more sense to use the rechargeable cells moving on to the user interface now very simple UI, push and hold for about a second and a half to turn it on and a single press cycles through the one to four power levels and you do have a mode memory for the last setting that you're on. If you want to get to the strobe mode, this can be done on or off, just push in and hold the side switch and then if you press again quickly, it takes you back to the last level or you can long press to turn it off. Here's your electronic lockout, double press and when you do unlock it, it goes back to the medium level not the last set power level. Um, small point, but it was mentioned in the manual and that's a mistake. So just to let you know on that side of things. Side switch on this is slightly raised, but it's pretty flat. Now what I show you is an alternative method of lockout apart from the electronic. And they, they only mentioned two in the manual, but you can just simply twist the head very slightly and that cuts the connection. You won't have an issue with it turning on once you do that. The other option is to just put the clip over the switch and I found the clip doesn't move around easily at least on this sample it stays in place quite firmly. You do have a low voltage indication on the LED that will flash three times every five minutes below a certain voltage and um, it's around about 2.9 volts. A couple of comparison lights now we've got the H1 Nova from Olight this is the upgraded version it's a neutral white LED and the on the road M3 they're all quite different in terms of design but I thought as I have these lights I'll just show you the beam shots compare between all of the different lights so you can see the difference. As far as the magnetic base goes, that's pretty strong even on a smooth surface like this. It really doesn't move around easily and that's possibly an upgrade. This light did come out a while ago, but um, I was interested in looking at it because it's my sort of type of light that I might like. So that's why I asked for one for review. So they may have upgraded things from the original. I have put the user guide up there on screen for you to have a look at. Onto the beam shots now, we've got the Unicorn one, which is a pretty warm LED in itself. And I go on to the on the road from the 320 to 620. I made a mistake a while back with the on the road power settings, but that's from the user guide. It's around about 600. Then we go on to the Olight H1. This is a neutral white LED. Um, you can see it's a pretty floody light. i um, been using this for quite a while now, and it's one of the Olights which at the time um, I liked, and I still do quite like this light. Then finally we get on to the E16. It's 150 lumens at the medium setting, which goes up to 700 lumens at the highest output. You can see it's got a pretty nice hotspot in the middle, very warm tint on this light. 
So I'll run a few more beam shots now, have a look at those, and then I'll give you a summary of some of my thoughts at the end of the video. Looking through the beam charts, you'll probably notice this has pretty good range for a 16340 light. It's definitely higher range than most of the lights that I've looked at. If we look at potential drawbacks, there aren't too many. One of them is that it doesn't have the shortcuts for the turbo or the low modes. Um, that's an area which I would have liked to have seen. And I do miss the four stage power indicator from the other Phoenix lights that I've looked at. That's something which I would have liked to have seen on this light. It's not often I say this, but this is definitely one of those lights which I would buy myself and I probably will end up picking up a few more of these because it is such a compact size. It's got quite a good range for a 16340 and I do like the warmer tint on these lights, particularly for an EDC light. Thanks to everyone who's been watching the videos and continues to support the channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll catch up with you in my next video coming up in about a week or so.